actually up at this time. So I'm so miserable. So me and my friend wanted to try this idea of waking up at 5 a.m. so we can get like a lot of our work done before our classes. And I guess the idea behind that was then after the classes, we'll just have the rest of the day off. Also something about waking up before everybody apparently makes you work a more uh, efficiently. Also, he, he's not even awake right now, so... I I know some of y'all are judging me for having instant coffee, but at this point I'll take anything. Run through what I want to get done today. So currently it's uh, it's 5.20 a.m. My first class is at 10 a.m. We're currently doing this uh, assignment, which is called a critical appraisal. So we got given two papers and we had to choose a paper and now we have to critically appraise the paper. That's task A, then there's multiple other tasks. Maybe I'm looking at, looked at a bunch of subjects um, who has the BRCA mutation. That mutation puts you at risk, at higher risk for breast cancer and other gynecological cancers. And the paper specifically was looking at whether uh, a risk reducing surgery can reduce the risk of these cancers or, or is, it, is it not worth it? I'll link the paper down below if you're interested. an hour in more than an hour and I've actually gotten a decent amount done so I already finished task A where I had to kind of come up with limitations confounders and biases for this paper and take a quick five minute break I'm gonna refill my coffee and then we'll be back to tackle task two that'll go on for another hour and then hopefully I can uh, get started on renal anatomy as miserable as I felt when I first woke up, I actually feel quite fresh now and I, I'm quite switched on, uh, which is great. So if this is something you're considering um, and you're not really a very early morning person, it doesn't stay. I think when you wake up, there's that 10 minute period where you're like, I just want to get back into bed. But once you actually sit down and get started with work, it, it kind of all falls in place. All good till now. Let's see how long this carries on. While we have been studying, the sun's been coming out. So I'm just gonna go outside, get some fresh air. Extremely cold here in Melbourne. Birds. It's so beautiful. brother got this hope for quarantine and it's literally been a lifesaver but let's get back to studying now let's finish potentially task two that's going to be insane because originally the plan was to just finish task a or task one um i've already finished that within an hour so i'm gonna get started on task two see if i can even get that done before i start renal anatomy that's just gonna be insane but yeah i'm feeling good i'm feeling productive let's just carry on with the momentum <laughs> Exactly eight o'clock. I've actually got a lot of work done. I actually completely finished the assignment. So I finished task one, task two, and task three, which is insane. I've just been super focused because at night I feel like there's so much distractions with people in the house, walking around, um, you know, people calling me, etc. 
Whereas now it was just me, you know, the world was asleep and I could focus on the assignment. But I just don't know if I'll be able to get myself to get out of bed that early every time. That's the critical appraisal completely done. So now we move on to the next phase, which is revising my renal anatomy. Um, I thought I would run you guys through my approach to learning anatomy because that's that can be quite hard um, because it's just so many different structures because you learn about, say, for example, uh, the kidneys. So there'll be two kidneys, but then there is a renal artery, there's the renal veins, there's all the muscles around it, there's its nerve supply. So there's a lot of things to know. Um, and it's not just learning one thing, it's more about can you interrelate these different parts like where does the artery uh, where is the artery located compared to the vein or compared to this muscle you need a high degree of spatial reasoning in order to imagine all these structures in three-dimensional space we have two types of exams so one is just a written exam um, so that's when there could be like what is the function of uh, for example the psoas muscle so that's more about you writing about a specific muscle. But the harder one is when they just give you a picture and then there's just random labels coming out and you have to figure out uh, which label is what. The pictures we get are from real uh, dissections. Everything's just everywhere and everything looks the same. Like I'm just like, whoa, is this a nerve or an artery or a vein? Because it all looks the same. The way I like learning anatomy is number one, going through just the textbook because it's, it's really easy to understand because things are colored. There are some really good apps that I suggest Anatomedia is great. We get access to our university to Anatomedia. It gives you a good idea of real life pictures, but what they've done is they've colored in different parts so you can see the labels. Another really good app is called Complete Anatomy. I've been using that since undergrad when I majored in anatomy. Basically, if you've got an iPad or even just a computer, like iPad's ideal because you can literally move the body around and zoom in and choose different structures. What sets this app apart is that it's extremely user-friendly um, and you can literally move things around. It's like having a literal body there which you could just dissect at any time, which is an amazing resource. My approach to learning in general is to do a lot of questions instead of passively learning. Pop-up quizzes on different anatomy sites um, such as Teach Me Anatomy, which has uh, good summaries. And then I try to make some questions from that and put it onto Anki uh, to do the flashcards. But in general, that's my approach. So go through the textbook, go through these apps, and then look at real pictures and try to figure out what's happening. I still struggle with anatomy, although I went through the entire anatomy major. It's still like, I feel like that Oh, the whole of undergrad feels like a blur now. I'm going to be revising the renal anatomy today because I've got a prac in two hours. If you, if you haven't really prepared for the workshops, it's kind of hard because there is no demonstrator there with us the, the entire time. It's more, you know, if we have a specific question, we can put our hand up uh, virtually and someone will come into the room. For all this 5 a.m. wake up is going pretty well. Uh, I'm not tired. I've gotten a lot of work done. People in my house are starting to wake up. I look forward to taking the night off, actually. That's what's keeping me going. So let's do some uh, anatomy. Oh boy. Let's see. Let's see how much I remember. Currently about 8.30, finished a little bit early. Let me just quickly show you guys how I take notes because I'm not a big fan of coming up with notes because I think, first of all, there's so many notes online that are available which are just so much better than what I could ever come, come up with. And I just think it's extremely inefficient. So what I do is this, right? On the left here, I've got Teach Me Anatomy. It's a good website and it runs through the different parts of the kidneys, its structures, arteries, etc. And what I do is essentially broadly just copy paste a lot of the notes. Um, but uh, I just try to filter through the things we're learning. For example, if you look here, um, they go into how the segmental arteries further divide into interlobar arteries. But we haven't learned that, so I don't copy that part over. But other than that, mostly I just sort of have my own sort of headings. And as a reference, so I don't have to go into the website again. And I just have that on Notion. It's literally as far as I go in terms of notes, um, because I think it's more important to learn actively for this to remain in my brain than to just write notes blindly. Uh, at the same time, a lot of people do find writing notes helpful. If it works for you, it works for you. I just think it's not the best use of my time. What I do think is the best use of my time right now is to go and do my flashcards, which is the final thing I wanted to do. Brain's still functioning really well. You know, you know, you know how I think this could go wrong if I had 
gone into bed to even sit down. Between one of these shots, I was thinking to just get into bed and doing my work. If I did that, like you wouldn't even see me anymore because I feel like I would have fallen asleep um, just because of the time. And I think my body's used to being asleep in this time. But if I'm just in a chair, that's sort of the way to go. I'm just gonna go to a place where there's a little bit more sun and light coming in, maybe some fresh air. Check this out, guys. As I was studying, I was also almost getting scammed here. So this person messaged me saying hi. I was like, what's up? It's like, how are you, brother? I was like, good thing. So who's this? It's like, do you know about robot best effects? Uh, at this point, I knew this was uh, not legitimate. It's like, what's that? He's like, whoa, you don't know about this? I was like, no, mind blown. And then he sent me this. Um, bs about how a robot can help you make money from the stock market let me just reply to him oh my god yeah let's get his hopes so all right let's do our flash cards came to a new place got some sun here i've just popped open anki so today i have a hundred uh new cards to do and 204 reviews to do so in total it's about 300 cards uh, it's actually quite a bit. It usually takes me like 40 minutes to do 200 cards, 40 to an hour. So maybe we might have to split this up, but I'll try to just get through it in one go. I'm just going to put on some music and enjoy the sun and finish the cards before the class. <laughs> Finished uh, all my reviews for Anki as well. I thought I'll take a break now and get some breakfast because it's around nine o'clock now. So my class is in, a, in an hour. So I'm gonna go have some breakfast, feeling good. Um, I'm getting a little bit tired, so I think a breakfast will help. spend the whole 40 minutes on TikTok. I'm, I'm, I think I'm addicted, it's an issue. Class is starting now, so that forced me to leave TikTok. But the class will go on till 1 p.m. and I'll check in with you guys after. All right, it's about to start, so I'm just gonna pay attention and I'm extremely anxious that I'm actually unmuted. One of the demonstrators also has a puppy and she usually shows us her puppy before we start class every time. And it's the best part of the week. Um, we basically come to these workshops just for the puppy. The workshop just finished. The plan now is to not study anymore, meet my family, tell them I do exist. 1 p.m. So I started at 5 a.m. and 1 p.m. So that was a good solid sort of eight hour run uh, with like a 40 minute break in the middle. Let's do a proper breakdown uh, in, in a different place. I'm done with this room. Cool guys, that was a good eight hour productivity run. I'm gonna touch on three different questions. One is if I'll do this again. Number two is if you should do this. And number three, I guess this idea of kind of like a productive, to toxic productivity, which I don't wanna promote. I'll probably do this again because I, now I have time to exercise, go out for a walk and spend time with the family as well. And probably, you know, watch Netflix, things like that, which I like doing at night. Two, if you, if you should do this, depends, right? If you are actually ultra productive at night and you can't really function in the morning, there's no point in you doing this. If you're productive, more productive in the morning. Number two, um, if, if there are things you like doing at night, say around midnight, 1 a.m., maybe you talk to your friends or someone, and because of this, you ha you're going to bed early, that's probably not worth it as well. I think I can manage going to bed around 11 every night, so this works out well for me. Just finally, this idea of toxic productivity, right? I, I used to watch a lot of YouTubers where, you know, they'll be ultra productive every day and that would motivate me to do work. But then the other side is where during days where you might not have a productive day, I don't want you to kind of feel like, feel like you wasted the day because it's okay. Like no one has a productive day every day. And I definitely don't want to promote that message. If you guys like this kind of content and motivates you to do work, sure, I'll, I'll love to keep making them. That's, that's it. I'm going to shoot some hoops now and I'll t I will take a shot. I told my brother I'll take a shot for the camera. And if it goes in, you know what to do. Let's go. Bro, that's so close.
Oh, go back. Kawhi dumps for, for Durant. Oh, oh wait, what a Ooh. play! Wow! Oh, wow! Got a piece of it. Wait.